let us consider that we have installed LabVIEW. Then we get the window. We have opened a new VI. We now know what is front panel and what is block diagram. We understand that front panel will be providing us the icons which are available for display. We understand that these icons can be controlled for the display or for controlling my function in the block diagram. OK. Now uh, I'm moving further. Uh, if I said so, uh, there are some other things which you should notice here. Uh, this is a data type of float. In LabVIEW, there is a color code for every data type. I'm not going into that because uh, as you will work with LabVIEW, you will understand how it is changing its color. So for the representation, we will get to know. Now, you can change these data type also. So just for example, you can change it to single pre precision. You can change it to long. So you can see I32 here. If I need to zoom it. A representation. So you can see there are these various type of data type. You can see some data types have written I uh, and some has prefix as I, some has prefix as U. So these are unsigned and these are unsigned and signed uh, integers, and uh, you can choose these values accordingly. So there are some other data types also which you can see here. You have this numeric. Other data type, you have Boolean as a data type. So here you can use these controls for Boolean operation for true or false. Then there is this string. So you can use a string as a data type. You can use arrays. You can see here it writes arrays. You can use clusters. Then there are some more things. So I will come to these later. Uh, then you can use enum also as a data type. OK, so these are various data types available on LabVIEW, which you can use for your particular operation. And uh, let us start one operation where we will see how data flow happens. We haven't discussed about data flow. We know front panel. We know block diagram. We understand all controls. And let us take one indicator also. So for example, you can use this LED as an indicator. OK, or you, you can use this numeric thing as an indicator too. You see, the first one is numeric control. The second thing is numeric indicator. So let me take this as numeric indicator. So this will be my control. This will be my indicator. OK, so how data flow happens in LabVIEW for that? LabVIEW actually follows the data flow model for these uh, uh, running of VIs, whatever VI we are making here, uh, a node in the block diagram. So this is the node. Data flow will actually happen here, and you will see the outcome in the front panel. So this data node in block diagram, when it will execute, it produces output data. So you can see since it is a control, it has an output. So it executes this, it produces this output data and passes the data to next node. So for example, we just have an indicator. We are not doing any operation as such. So this is an indicator. This must have an input. This is not giving any output. You see, this is giving an output and not taking any input. Since this is control, you can feed something here. And this is an indicator. You can visualize only. OK, you cannot control it. So you will give whatever input you will give here. It will just show you. And how do you do that? So for that, we use wire here. And once you go to any node, you see my this plus cursor. My cur see my cursor. This plus is changing to this wire reel. So you get this wire reel and just collect, just click it. Left click. And then once you reach to the other one, as, as soon as it, it starts blinking, you will have to left click again and see it is connected. So the data flow in LabVIEW happens with this wire, through this wire. So if I write, con if I control it, for example, by putting a number 4, and I want to see the reflection at indicator, for that I have to, I will have to run this VI. 
for running this is the first uh, icon here on the ribbon see my cursor so as soon as i run it you see the value at control is transferred to indicator so neither top to right nor left to right in lab view this data flow actually happens in a way like the these control executes at, at first so when a node execute it pro it produces output data passes the data to the next node and in I mean passes the next node in data flow path and this movement of data through nodes this determines the execution order of vi and functions of the block diagram so what determines whatever is control whatever is executed first will pass its data and to whom so ever that will further process it and then that will process its data so you can keep it here you can keep it this way I mean nothing left right you can change it from here you can run it so then five so data flow is by the wires only this is what i wanted to show uh, then moving further we have seen data flow let us now do one operation so now i don't want an indicator simply whatever i am writing i want to add it let us have a functionality of add so i am going to this numeric functions and let us take add again for connecting i went to this node click this node let me take it so control c control v i can use that you can simply uh, press control and drag it also for the copy function let me connect it here and connected to indicator so this time i have two controls okay so 5 plus 5 i must have 10 but you see as soon as i run it i am not able to change it further I mean i cannot see the indicator continuously and for that you it is provide it provides you run continuously so if you run continuously you see uh, this front panel view also change as soon as your lab view comes into run mode you notice these uh, grids actually here are grids as soon as i run it these grids are vanishes and now if i am controlling it you see the instantaneous change in the indicator okay let us take an application for example i don't want to run it continuously perhaps i want something i want to write a vi where if i run it it should run continuously and for that what do we need uh so for running it continuously we know we have loops in hand we use loops where we want some uh, particular operation to run iteratively okay so let me go to the first uh, loop so picking for loop or let me have while loop first okay so i have taken this while loop and we know while loop must have a about condition so for that here is this stop button and this stop button you can see loop condition so you have to write something and what do you need to write i am right clicking on it and you see so coming down here it says stop if true so currently it is in the condition if there is anything true it will stop you can tick continue if true you see the icon is also changing you can come back to stop if true okay so the condition here you can see uh, one input is blinking here so there you can define based on the its current operation so its current operation is set to stop if true so let me have a control so what do i need here Bo numeric or boolean since this is asking me stop if true so that is a decision operation okay so for that i need boolean and on the same time you should notice that this is green let me zoom it for example here you see it is orange colored here it is green colored so these green color also resemble boolean operation so that you will also notice some times later as soon as you start working with labview 
I want to make the size bigger. I am making it okay boolean. So I have created this control. If I double click on it, it will automatically highlight the respective node here. So I am connecting it here. Okay. Now if I run it, my while loop is ready. Some iteration. So you will get number of iteration from here. It says loop iteration. So this is an output. You are not going to control it in this case. So it is giving you iteration as an outcome, and taking the condition where it should stop as an input. So I have this boolean button here. Now I am running it. So see, I am not continuously running it, but it is in constant run mode. I can control my outcome by controlling my input, and then once I want to finish it up, I will just. Click here. So I have stopped it. Okay. There are some operation which you can do. So just to demonstrate, you can go to properties and you can see the operation here. You have several operations: switch when pressed, switch when released, switch until released. So these operations you will do as per your requirement on a particular project or on a particular exercise. So this is how we are working with while loop. And now, if I want to change this while loop with for loop, so this time we are taking for loop. Again, how you picked it? Right click, programming. The first thing is structures. In structures, there is for loop. I just left clicked here. Left. Once you drop it, just left click on the block diagram. It will be like this. Or if you want to. or you can simply double click on the block diagram and drag it so the size you want you can have here okay so this is how i place a for loop similarly i placed while loop here now let me do something what i want i want a blinking button for example okay this is just a random exercise a very simple exercise i would say so i have taken an led somewhere so this is my led and what i want i want to blink it at some rate okay for that what do i need what do i need i need to program i need to write a function which will control this led so that it blinks at a interval okay for that uh, what i can do let us let us uh, do it like for every iteration it will just glow and for the other iteration it will just go off okay so what do i need i take a numeric operation where i take this particular iteration and i since we know iteration will go keeps on increasing uh, one by one divide your iteration by 2 so you, you on a particular input or output you can also right click and create constant or control or indicator since it is taking as input we can define and control okay you get it you can also change this control to a constant in that case you can simply right click and create constant let me connect it okay so mean you want to divide your iteration by 2 uh, let me compare it for that i will go to this comparison thing so this outcomes okay i will compare it again i am creating a constant i will compare it whether it is zero or not so since i am dividing it by 2 every alternate number will be equal to 0 the remainder will be 0 and this is how i connect it to boolean okay now i want to run it but you see this run is broken you can either run it from the front panel or from the block diagram and you can notice that the run icon is broken so this once you click here it will list you the errors and the error is 
for loop n is not wired and there are let me zoom it for loop n is not wired and there are no indexing inputs okay so for that in any for loop the way you indicated a condition in while loop for the operation to abort you have to define number of iterations in for loop so again you can create a control or a constant if you want to run it for a constant uh, number of iterations i am taking it as a control here okay i write for example 100 iterations and i run it did you notice anything uh, no because this speed of operation is so fast that you couldn't see the blinking of this particular led and for that what we should do uh, let us do something by which every iteration should take some time okay for that i am going to timer here and this is wait so i am adding this wait and finding it here instead you name you know the name of something for example i know wait but i don't know where it is so there is this search in this palette you can just click on search you can type wait as soon as you type it will automatically show you several options relate several re related options so i am picking this wait mill i know it is wait millisecond i picked it so you get to the same icon again i am picking it placing it here and now let me pause it for half a second since it is in milliseconds uh, how do i know that it is in milliseconds so as soon as you hover on something i am hovering on this particular icon you can press control h so this is how you will get some help also and you can see the input is milliseconds to wait okay you have some detailed help also once you click here the lab view will guide you to the detailed page where it has a proper documentary and it will tell you about about each and every icon how it functions how what are the parameters how sh you should define them and for most of the cases you will get some examples also okay so our timer is ready by the way and now let us rerun it so for every iteration it will wait for half a second you see for 500 millis millisecond it is on for an another 500 millisecond it is off which is defined by this wait period here it was also happening earlier but it was so fast that we couldn't notice so this is our another exercise with for loop any question and to stop it uh, what can you do you can either you can only wait for these 100 iterations to finish 100 iterations to finish sorry uh, or you can just stop it from here so uh, let me understand uh, let me tell you one very important thing in your in your lab view vi's never try to use this red button to stop I mean i am stopping it here but what actually i am doing i am aborting an operation so the data flow which was there is not completed uh how could i make you clear with this okay so let us talk about another debugging oper operation lab view provide you this bulb here you see highlight execution let me zoom it so there is this bulb icon and as soon as i hover on it Okay. It says highlight execution. Okay, so this is very good uh, debugging operation when you are puzzled with your initial operations. You should I would recommend you to try it out. As soon as you click on it, let me remove it because it is it will slow anyway the operation. So now I am running it. You see, this will teach you how. data flow is happening in this lab view you see goes false uh, let me zoom it true for another iteration true then it will be false for the next thing okay false so in instead of these tiny icons you can also click on this probe uh, you see this probe is there so as soon as you click on probe uh,
let me bear with it to have it located on a screen okay so as soon as you click on a wire you click on a probe you can see the values here so the selected probe it is nomenclature is happening like 1 and 2 you can see then the value on that probe true or false or these are number of iterations which are increasing 22 23 you can see okay and the last update it will also informing you whether it is updating or not when mean uh, how frequent it is updating you can see the things here so this is very good method of debugging your code debugging your vi once you are in the initial phases because you can understand for a big program bearing with these small iterations is really tedious though there are these step over retain wire values step to next iteration step over equal finish iteration so these are some break points as you use break points in matlab there are these break points which you can guide you for the debugging of an operation so this is another debugging operation which allows you to see the data flow also uh, okay yes and now i am zooming it out okay so this is how this is happening you can see how many iterations have been executed so 45 iterations have been executed so if i stop it here what i wanted to show you if i stop it here you see the program is stopped straight away there okay so that is why you should choose these values properly or you if you don't want to run for that longer or you have to define some boolean operation you have to define in your code for example i did in the while loop i took that button i took this button to create and stop and then i whenever i wanted i just clicked it to stop the code and then once you do it from this code the data flow will be completed and then only your code will stop so that is why i i will recommend you to use only the functional button only the programmed button to stop your code rather than this abort function okay then moving towards the next thing so for example i have this uh, numeric thing i can also change this data type as i told you there are different data types i can change this data type to some other data type for example i want to replace it i rather than this particular numeric i take this boolean okay you see this change to boolean i i can change it to replace and then it will again uh, guide you through the palette and you can select for example a string so you can change these controls as per your requirement but you should notice the third thing another debugging operation for you so either you go to this uh, broken run wire broken run icon or you can have it straight away on the wire so this will guide you that what is the problem so it says let me zoom so it throws the error as the type of source is string so you know your control is string the type of sync is long so you know we were using an integer here and of course for a for a for loop you want it to provide a number for many for many iterations it's it should run so you have to be careful while handling with multiple data types anyway this wires will guide you through if, if you have opted and wrong choice or the correct choice Uh, one more quick thing which i wanted to show you you can use arrays here also as i told you so let me take array once you take an array it is an blank array so let me take three different arrays the same will apply to the clusters and what is the difference between this array and cluster so you have this array and you have this cluster so we all know the definition of array very well this it belongs to a single data type and for example if you take a numeric control you put it in the array it becomes a numeric array you take a boolean you put it here it becomes a boolean array you take a string 
you put it here it, it becomes a string array but a cluster cluster can have any uh, data type it, it it is a combination of multiple data types for example you can put a numeric here you can put a boolean also you can put a string also so the simple difference between array and cluster and you can use this as per your need in the in your code so this is how you create arrays and clusters moving further just wanted to let you aware that you can use these things in your code uh, you can also visualize the difference between an array and numeric indicator for example this is an indicator so let me also guide you with this you see it is a numeric control i connect it for example i connect it here uh, will it be connected yeah so i connected it here and this is the same numeric but array so if i connect it you can see the wire thickness so let me also guide you through this visual uh, impressions whether this is a single numeric integer or data type or it is an array so this is a 1d array if you have 2d array this particular wire thickness will further increase but i am not sure if it will keep on increasing for higher dimensions so these are some uh, graphical representations which uh, levu provides you to easily diagnose that what is where and how you have connected the things uh um, further moving further uh, the next thing comes to you using the loops uh, oh loops are covered but let us have an example where we are going to use a particular loop uh, for some operations so for example uh for example let me have a chart i haven't introduced you with graph and chart which is the most uh, important thing for you guys i believe in most of your exercises you are going to have a graphical representation of things for that you can use graph you can use chart let me change it to graph so this is chart this is a form graph let me delete other things and the next thing there are several more things which will be which can be utilized as per your applications but these three things are very basic and you will frequently use them more commonly these charts and graphs are used for a particular waveform for a single uh, uh, for for a particular waveform which can be plotted against the number of iterations the basic difference between chart and graph is graph can provide graph can plot a particular array or a particular point for a defined instance for what i mean to say it cannot store the data while chart can have a memory and can store the data and can plot the things the way they are changing for example you input 1 it will plot 1 the next time you input 0 it will remember that you plotted 1 before and it will interpolate that to zero so let us see it through an example let me have this for loop only where do i need to go to while loop okay so we have three things chart graph and xy graph so let us plot and sine wave and this will be available in some math math Uh, palette so i will go to mathematics so instead of numeric i will go to the second one and it's those trigonometric functions in trigonometric functions this sign is available what i could also do i can search it i could search it sign and you get this trigonometric function right so these are two different ways so let me take a sine wave control h we should always ask lab you for help that is the good thing so for any x this computes the sine of that x okay where x is in radians it is defining you that so why to create a numeric integer let us take this number 
here as x and then uh, let us see if what happens if we plot it over a waveform chart so i will introduce them later mm. let me show you the chart and then i will go for so this time i am not creating a control perhaps i am fixing it for 100 iteration okay and then the speed matters let us have a little amount of time so that we can see things are happening at an interval okay so now i am plotting it oh my execution is on let me hide it you see so this is chart this is remembering the last the previous data and it is keeps on adding the things okay in instead if we had used this graph if we had used this graph okay so again another error what is this error it says the type of source is double okay a, a number the and the type of thing is 1d array okay so since we have a single number and uh, i told you that this can plot a value for a single point so for that we will need to put it outside once we will have the number for all these 100 iterations so i am connecting it here oh it is doing it by default which i, which I wanted to show you later so i am putting it here again it will ask for the array okay so let me do something i will explain it later okay so now i am running it so you see in chart it is remembering the last position for the graph it is not showing anything until unless we stop it or it completes 100 iteration so 100 iterations are completed but you cannot see anything here why because once you connect anything to outside of this for loop you get several operation several options out of which it is currently considering the go to tunnel mode it is currently considering the last value only so let me index it so what indexing means it will keep on concatenating the things it will keep on uh, building the array it will remember all the values and build an array and that array will be passed to this waveform graph and let us now run it again so you see you are getting the same thing but the only advantage of having a chart was we were able to visualize the thing the next comment can come why you have kept this uh, waveform graph outside if you keep it inside perhaps you will get the outcome as chart okay so let us do it i am keeping it inside again so since this is a single uh, number i it will not take it as it is so i am choosing this build array option so this will build an array of whatever is coming okay now i am running it you see it is not displaying the waveform but we have made an array it should have done that no it will not why because it is displaying the data for the current iteration for example if n is equal to 5 then whatever the value is that is only going here and you can see the y axis was changing as per the values you can see these values are varying from minus 1 to 1 so the y axis was varying but the time axis is fixed because time axis was considering only what is happening at the current time at zero so that was displayed here as a point so you could not see it and that is why you will you are always encouraged to use these graphs in concat in this indexing mode and then if you run it you will get the plot at the end so this is what a graph is in labview okay 
you can uh, increase this history by you see chart history length so you can increase the history length you can do some more operations as you want uh, one interesting thing is uh, you can export this data to excel also for further operation so this is the significance of chart and graph and then let me show you uh, xy graph also so in xy graph this is nothing new but you have to for example i connect this array thing here what is the er error it, it throws the type of source is 1d array of double we know for the waveform wave graph it is going 1d array of double but the type of thing is 1d array of cluster of two elements so that means you need to provide x and y to it okay and for that let me take let me tell you a simple vi here i took cos before just a nice program for you i will take the cosine of this also oh i i removed graph so in the xy graph it was asking for a cluster so for that i will go to this programming here in the uh, next to array there is this cluster functions so here i will bundle the things i will make a cluster and cluster of what cluster of this sine outcome i will tell you why i am taking choosing this program so sine and cosine are there and now i can connect it to xy graph what i am doing i am plotting xy graph for sine and cosine outcome and we know when we plot sine versus cos it will always be a unit circle that we know very well right sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so the radius of circle will always be 1 getting it right uh okay let me run it oh so this is not a perfect circle uh you can see that this circle is there from minus 1 to 1 and let me change my input let us have a smaller number let us try with 10 okay you see this time it is touching from minus 1 to 1 and it is perfect circle and why this is one uh, just for the information this radius is under root sin square theta plus cos square theta at a particular point and that is always one so that is why i took this particular uh, example so that you will have some understanding how this xy plot is being plotted so we know what is the difference between chart and graph and when to use these different type of graphs we know that we can use these graphs for the representation purpose on the front panel okay so then moving to the next uh, programs uh i am opening some programs which uh, i have done uh, let me see if there is anything i left okay so there is one program which i wanted to show you so the front panel and block diagram can be adjusted by clicking control t so this is in shortcut where you will see you can keep them side by side so this is an example uh, where we will see how this chart is functioning for example i run it and then there is this a and b are boolean controls so based on these boolean control the operation will occur here and we will get the outcome at chart so whether it is zero or one how it is functioning so let me keep both high so now it is zero you all can guess what is the operation or you can see this icon to understand what is this operation which is happening here so as soon as i click it so you see if i do it quickly there will nothing be changed because i have to be 
I have to do it at least in an interval of one second. Otherwise, if I do two switch changes within one second, that will not be noticed. I hope you all understand. So let me stop it. Let us see program more closely. So in this program, you can see that I have taken A and B, and then we have taken this not and. Okay. So this is the NAND operation. But then there is this something. Let me delete it. So if I want to connect this to waveform chart, it is not taking. It is not ac accepting. Why? It throws the error that the type of source is boolean, but the type of sync is some integer. Okay, it says word, so word is defined by the size of this integer. So it says the sync is some integer. So for that, LabVIEW provides you some options, some functions which convert this boolean thing zero or one. Uh, actually, LabVIEW reads it uh, as true or false. So this. Boolean to zero one will convert this true and false to zero and one, and as soon as it is changed to zero and one, it becomes a number, and that number can be plotted easily, and so the curve is okay. I am rerunning it, and now these booleans are plotted in the form of numbers in waveform chart. You cannot plot true false here, but you can plot a number here. There are instances where you use a particular data type. For example, you use strings. Then how would you control those strings? You need to control those strings in the form of uh, integers so that you can tell LabVIEW that whether it is uh, um, whether it is one string or the other. And for that, we use enum type integers, which is not discussed. so let us go to see how enum type data variable can help so you know the basic operations let me just quickly go through the enum operation and to demonstrate how it works how can you define a particular thing so this is your enum data and for example you have a, the a week you want to define uh, for example you have a case structure i haven't discussed that too yet let us take an example of case structure i am taking this case structure okay now instead of true and false what i want i want to define a program where something happens on sunday something happens on monday or so on okay and then how do you do it so for that you need this enum type of data type where you edit its data type i believe here no it is the data type and let me check edit items okay so you ha huh, you could go here so in edit items you can put sunday insert you can put monday insert you can put tuesday so okay now you don't want this thing so you have three items and these items can be anything for example i took sunday monday tuesday and then you see the right hand side values so you can define any items for your liking as per your uh, experiment as per your exercise but the lab you will understand those in the form of numbers for for example 0 1 and 2 here I mean not for example ena will always uh, designate a number to them so 0 1 2 are there and now and now we were using a case structure so this case structure had true false which can be connected by uh, let me show you for this which can be connected by create control so any boolean thing can be acted as a control which will define whether if it is true up uh, this true window will be followed or whatever will be inside this window will uh, will be executed if it is false whatever is in this window will be executed but now i want to go beyond true and false 
I selected this enum, and you see your true and false are changed to Monday, Tuesday. Where is my Sunday? And for that, you can add case after. Okay. So for the third thing, you can have add case after. Right click, add case after, and this is how you will get all the three Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay. So this is how. Now, if you have selected anything, for example, by through enum, you select Monday or Tuesday, the respective window will run. uh let me take an example let me keep it very simple oh. i took this numeric control i took another numeric control i take operation as plus i take an indicator so i am taking this very simple example to tell you that how things works so you see as soon as i connected this to numeric 3 this toes hollow thing this this tunnel is hollow as we have seen earlier we named this tunnel so you can see that this is hollow but this is filled why what is the reason the reason is we haven't connected anything for the rest of the cases so this is how you visually experience this now for tuesday let me take minus operation i think the easiest example i could think you see again it is not filled by because there is one more case sunday for example take multiply so this is how our case structure will be covered and enum also covered you see as soon as i connected this is filled why because it is getting the input from all the three cases okay now your sunday monday is plus i kept it monday numeric 1 is 1 numeric 2 is 6 and i run it it tells me 7 if i say tuesday tuesday i have minus Answer is minus five. I keep it Sunday. I run it. The product will be six. So this is how. E okay. So let me open an example for you. So this is an. This is the example. Control T. Control. There is one more shortcut. Uh, I am telling you two shortcuts. ha huh. so you can see the broken wire here so for these broken wires if you want them to disappear you can put control b these wires will disappear and uh, if you have these your code ready though i won't recommend you but if you click control u you will get everything aligned properly uh, for example i have uh, this 1000 for the stopwatch here now if i select it if you do it control u it will be aligned properly in a decent way and if you don't select a particular object and you press control u the whole thing will be converted to a nicely managed thing okay so this is there are these two shortcuts control u and control b control b for broken wire control u for managing this uh, layout if you have too much of disturbances or putting things here and there okay so let me get it back in a way you can understand it
okay so here you see i have a numeric what i am doing i am putting that numeric for example i did i put this numeric to here on the edge of while loop and then right click on it and i replaced it with shift register so this is what i did once you replace it with shift register you will get the same icon here and why this is here this is here to provide you the last value so in our example control b so in our example we have taken it we have created a shift register and this shift register can be expanded to any number for example if this is n you can get n minus 1 from here n minus 2 from here n minus 3 from here so and so on so what i am doing i am taking three previous values which are demonstrated here just for a quick tip you can align your objects also uh, and you do it from here you see i could align it so these are there are several tricks which i am not discussing at this point of time to because this doesn't really help you in the exercises perhaps in the decoration they can okay so this is how i have a numeric control i am having n minus 1 value n minus 2 value n minus 3 value mean third previous value second previous value and the last value and i have put this boolean uh, mean just to give you a feel that i am changing it in an interval of 1 second so that you will be able to see what all is changing uh, how you get the last value so i am running it everything is zero so on every blink i will increase the number 1 2 3 so you see the first this is how you get the last three values and now since the iterations are going on i am not i haven't changed it for last three iterations that is why the last three values are same if i change it to four you will see the last value the second last the third it becomes the third last after three iteration so this is how you can get the previous values once you need it in your exercises uh, this is the role of shift register in lab view which is very helpful I mean i find it very useful in my experiment okay so shift register is also complete now uh, the next thing which i consider very important for you is to export the data from a chart so you had a chart earlier and i told you that how can you get the let me open that particular vi mm, graph what is it? is it there ha huh? so if you run it so i am coming back to my last program uh i am running it for some iterations okay now i have stopped it so what i told you earlier that you can export whatever the entry in the chart or in graph or in xy graph whatever is there you can export that data to excel so for example i am doing it exporting data to excel so this time plot you see for the iteration 0 you get the value 1 iteration 1 you get the value 1 for iteration 10 you you get the first change so i believe you get the first change after quite a some time quite after some time so this is how your data is now stored to excel for the further analysis or whatever you want to do any operation on it data data file but the thing is there are instances when we want to use the same data in our matlab in our lab view program for further operations for example i get this data but in the in the subsequent uh, executions i want to use this particular data 
for any of the operation of my liking so for that what should i do we should have a proper uh, I mean we should code this thing we we should be able to write it in vi so that we can uh, uh, save this data in a spreadsheet or any uh, file and then we can recall it later for, uh, for another operation or for its analysis in the same code so what should be the proper flow we want the data whatever the data is to be saved in a at a particular location in our uh, drive whatever machine we are using or wherever we want to save that data so for that we need some operations in lab view you will get some express vi where you can uh, save a particular file or read that particular file but i would recommend you to not to follow that because that is an express vi as i informed in the beginning so lab view has vi's express vi's functions sub vi's so these uh, uh, several things are there functions we know these very elementary form of operations is called functions and if these functions are combined for a user defined experience for a user defined uh, user controlled operation that is named as express vi uh, lab view has done that for example if i show you uh, in signal processing waveform generation so if i if i show you this so express vi are generally blue in color if you opt any so this is you see this is a signal where it is generating a sine wave i have also generated a sine wave last time using that simple sine function so instead of that i could also use this express vi and i can define which function i want sin square triangle sort root dc i can convert this to cosine by putting some offset in uh, phase or however i want I mean there are several things to control i can control samples per second i can control number of samples in the waveform so these all are different things so this is an express vi which can be configured for a specific operation as per my liking okay so i would also always recommend you to not to use these uh, express vi because these eat up more memory these take more time to operate because they they have designed a huge program for our convenience so for the basic exercises for the learning purpose you can anyways go to these express vi and see how things are getting changed and what are the reflections what are the how a particular design par parameter is resulting in something which is of your interest but in a code if you use it that will definitely take some time as i am taking time that is iteration time so every iteration has a timing right it takes some time to execute for example it was happening so fast we couldn't see the execution of led blinking then we put some hold time so what actually we did we actually increased the iteration time of a single iteration so that we could see the led blinking so this increases that iteration time and also eats up more memory so i would suggest not to use this but <coughs> use the basic operations and similarly for the file operations you will have an express vi where you can read or write or do things as your own interest i am teaching you i am telling you how to do it with the simple operations with the minimal load on lab view minimal load on your machine for that i will go to this file palette thing so in file this thing you can write delimited spreadsheet you can read delimited spreadsheet so these are elementary options but this you can see the blue uh, color on the icons so these are actually express vi then there is these, there are these functions open create replace file close file format into file you can format uh, the file mean the way you want to save it for example you are saving 1 2 3 4 but if you want to save it in floating form for example 1.1.0 1.000 so those formattings can be done uh, similarly there are other options which i am not discussing uh, here let us what we want to do at first if you want to open a if you want to read from one file or write to the file the first thing is we need to open that particular file so opening that particular file uh just a minute 
ओके सो थैंक यू फॉर लाइंग मी अकेंड सो वी वॉन्टेड टू राइट द थिंग वी वर हेयर हाँ सो वी हैव ओपन द फाइल एंड अगेन देर आर यू सी देर आर सेवरल इनपुट एंड आउटपुट एंड फॉर दैट वी डू कंट्रोल एच सो हेयर द फर्स्ट थिंग इज प्रॉन्ट लेट अस लीव दैट टू डिफॉल्ट यू कैन ऑलवेज गो टू द डिटेल हेल्प एंड सी वॉट दैट मीन्स आई एम डूइंग द नेसेसरी थिंग्स ऑनली so file path here i can create a constant i can create a control can i create an indicator actually not why if you create a indicator it will not be connected you see you are actually giving input to it so that should be either a control or a constant not an indicator and once you do that this will guide you through these break wires and that break wire i skip that so you can see you have connected an input of open create replace file to an indicator change the indicator to a control or add a source okay so this is why you should not use an indicator oh. i am creating a control here the next thing it says uh, it is displaying highlighting here operation so let me create a constant you can also create a control and this constant will also provide you some options the constant just means that you are defining it in the block diagram itself you don't want to change it and so you are not keeping it in the front panel you keep the things on the front panel which you want to change over the experiment or you want to visualize uh, over the experiment okay so here what i want to do i want to open a file or open or create a file okay if file is not there for example we have selected a file list and list dot txt is not there so it will take care of that and automatically create it otherwise you can keep it only open but make sure if you select list list dot txt must be available there then access so create again constant you can either read or write whatever you want if my program is for writing i can select it for write only or i can leave it to read write that will work both ways then refnum out so refnum out is actually this uh, information whatever setting you have done on the file path is will be passed through this refnum out uh, then cancel then error out okay so you have opened your particular uh, you have define the settings that you want to open something you have defined that path of file that you want to open that particular file but you haven't defined what you want to do for that file you will get a write to text file so after opening you have though you have defined that you want to read write but you have to specifically define it here so now again see the help so it ask you about the file info that file path and then the text you want to save so you can put the text or you can save that whatever data log you have from your chart or anything so let us create a control so this is by default an string let us keep it as an string only uh file path is there text is there we have define we will control what do we want to write and the next thing is okay so we have written what do whatever we wanted now we can close it so ref now out then it is closed the next thing you can see here most of uh, some of the functions will provide you this error out option so this error out option is actually something which won't which will pass on the errors if anything on your execution so the significance will be cleared later if we encounter any error okay now what i want i want to define the file path so in tutorial i take a file a b c d okay so there is no a b c d file okay a b c d file not found check the file name and try again 
so i am not creating and i am putting it as it is i am not sure if it will take it mm hmm uh, okay i come to it later i don't know why it is not letting me have that let us create a file new text file a b c d a b c d dot text okay so you can see this is our path and this is the text which we want to store for example i say lab view tutorial and i run it so this is the run and now i want to go to that particular location i want to open it you see the file is written with lab view tutorial so this is how you write a file now for example this file is there the file is saved now you want to read that particular file so i'm not changing everything just this block and read read from text file so the path will be connected the next thing where is my history so help so the next thing is count so let me create a control earlier i created constant this time i am creating control i don't need a text because whatever i wanted to save i have saved control b and i just want to read it out now okay so again we must define the file path which is already there and count you see count is minus 1 so if you go to detailed help Hmm. Oh, depend. Count. Read from text file. Detailed help. If you go to detailed help, you can see count, and the information about count is. Read this thing. if the count is less than 0 the function reads the entire file starting from the current file position however you can define the maximum number of characters any time to read so i am keeping it minus 1 so that it should recall it should read everything okay count minus 1 now whatever will be read again control h hey where is my help yeah so this is the outcome text earlier we put text as input now we are putting as we are using the text as output so this time i created a control which should not be acceptable why because we should use an indicator not control this time because we want to see the outcome okay so this is as an indicator this time if i run it we have read the file you see we have written lab view tutorial and this time we are reading it from the file this is how you can read and you can use this text for the further operation so you can do both the things in a same program and use it for your particular code this is how read and write operation happens we need to open the file at first then read or write the file and then close the file you people are pretty comfortable in matlab and you may prefer at a time that you put a matlab code instead of writing this lab view vi so that is also totally fine with it lab view provides you that option where you can use a particular uh, function to define your matlab code there and then you can access that Uh, access the outcome of your matlab code 
and for that you have in the maths uh, in in the loop i believe yeah so you have two things there is one formula node so this is formula node you can define any formula inside and you can get the outcome but if you want to have a i would say the advanced version of this formula node that is math script so you can simply type in your matlab program here and you can execute it straight away as a lab view code you will get the outcome as in your matlab parameters as your matlab parameter outcome and those par those outcomes can be used in lab view for further processing let me show you an example math script and formula note ignore something something to ignore control p okay okay so let me skip it at this point of time so this is our formula node let us focus on this so i have taken a very minimal formula here here i have written a formula y is equal to 2x where i can define a input by right clicking here add input you can add input for example g you can control that input or you can define a variable define a number to that uh, input by creating constant I mean both the ways are possible and then once you define an input you write a formula the outcome of the formula can be defined as an outcome so right click similarly as input you can define the outcome and then once you run it you will get the value uh if there is a variable let me have it let me delete the unnecessary things so run oh uh, so this is for the matlab code which is there stop yeah so this error came okay let let us see if i can tell you something so this is how you s excuse me for this <laughs> this is interrupting me in saying something let me put in disabled okay okay so now i'm running it so you see input variable 4 output variable 8 let me run it continuously as i change the variable my outcome is changing based on the formula node i am using okay whatever formula is defined i am getting the outcome accordingly this formula node can be enhanced can be uh, further advanced to a math script which if you have installed math script you will get this particular node here this particular loop to define uh, delete 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 remove remove okay so this is the math script node here instead of defining a formula as we do in maths we have written that code as a matlab code and we are we are uh, generating a sine wave form and for that i the matlab code says f is equal to input input frequency in hertz let me zoom it so here i am getting f frequency period time everything as an in, uh, sorry frequency amplitude and phase as an input from the user and then i am i am calculating the value i am calculating sine value of those defined parameters and then i am plotting it so over some iterations i am expecting a sine wave form and those iterations are defined by this time period so i have selected a range of time period for that i am calculating this y and this y will be a sine wave form at the end so if i run this particular program now don't focus on this these are of no matter here so let me run it so 
as per the code it is first asking me the input frequency so let me uh, write 10 hertz okay then it will asking input amplitude in volts so 10 volts then it is asking phase so let me have a zero degree phase okay then it should provide me a plot and you can see this plot is available to us in the math uh, plot math figure this is equivalent to that math figure which you it, it is equivalent to that math figure which you uh, get once you run a matlab code you can also get this particular waveform in this waveform graph so this waveform graph is plotted here the pop up window which came as a plot is due to this function plot but whatever i am plotting it here on the lab view is because of i am plotting this outcome y in this waveform graph so this is how i i have plotted a sine waveform following just a matlab code there is no lab view i haven't used any of the lab view if i am not using this i am just using this to demonstrate that you can further transform these things into lab view and then we know we know how to save it in a file we know how to process it further we know how to take this array for a for, for further operations when you simply wire it so this is how we can use a math script in our lab view program uh, so this is the code here you see it side by side i have designed a lab view code for the sine waveform generation here i have simply used this sine function i am not using any uh, express vi keeping the things at minimal what i am doing i am whatever lab view code is uh, math script code was written i have transformed that into lab view this is it just took the frequency just defined the time interval from the number of iterations just getting number of cycles from the user input and then after some operations giving the input to this sign so that i can get i can get the sign of that particular number which i have which i am calculating here then i am plotting this into an xy graph why xy graph here i am taking time as axis rather than iteration if i don't define it as, as xy axis perhaps my x axis will be number of iterations but here i forced that x axis to be time axis and for that i have to do these uh, several operations so here in my code i have to let me go to full screen here in my code i have to define number of samples for example i take 100 number of cycles so i can control how many cycles i want to plot here for example take 5 i can control what frequency i want to be plotted let's say 100 hertz and then the amplitude so i take it and any number so you can see some of these gauze uh, gauze or this uh, bar display how can you get that for example you have this indicator okay so this indicator can be converted change 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 replace so this can be converted there so likewise we were having numeric control numeric and, uh, indicator you can have these uh, uh, visual indicators or controls for example if i take it as a meter for example i can choose this bar so these are several options which are available you can pick them as per your liking or as per the suitability of the operation in your code so here i am taking some amplitude this is the phase i can define for example 40 degrees somewhere and now if i run it so i must have a sine waveform based on these inputs so the amplitude is nearly 40 the phase is shifted so that is according to 40 degree if i shift it 90 degree you will be able to see it a cosine wave you see okay and the frequency i can increase the frequency so numerical controller you can also define it by simply typing here or you can just increase or decrease from the control every control comes with this uh, buttons so that you can control you can change the control value let me increase the frequency and rerun it 
so you will not notice the frequency because time axis is scaled accordingly currently it is 0.025 if i take it 100 run you see it is just double of that number of cycles number of samples you can change all those things if i keep number of samples very low this will look like distorted if i increase number of samples to 10 this will be better in shape better in shape i mean not the perfect and if i keep if i keep enough number of samples i will have a decent fine wave okay so this all you understand so this is an example code which i wanted to show you you know some cosmetics also now you can change the color vision everything you just go to properties and you can change all those things so those are not very important to cover <clears throat> then uh, what the next thing remains you have you know now math script you know now formula node you know now um, these uh, cosmetics and then there is one last thing property node which uh, might be useful for some of you for example uh, so uh, i am not going far let us take this example again so property node is something for example you want to change the property of some icon some node for example this chart is there so you want to change the property this is just an uh, additional thing so property node for example you want to have it blinking so you can have this, have this property why i am introducing you with this property node because in some of the operations some of the waveforms once you were dealing with those you will need the property of then to debundle or bundle so that you can uh, combine those things to get a particular objective to get a particular things so just for an example uh, i can show you that what can be done with this properties create change all to right and i am what i am doing i am changing i am keeping this chart to be blinking so you have seen the graph now you will notice the change blinking true i kept true and now start so currently you see it will blink the trace is now blinking right so similarly you can extract the properties from uh, some of the uh, functions from some of the outcomes of uh, uh, of your operations or signals which you want to have over the time for example these are very helpful ones you try to build a waveform so in waveform there are several component I mean how do you make a waveform you must uh, know the initial point you must know the uh difference between two samples you know the values of those samples so you get three components for to build a waveform right there you can extract these properties so like this is a, just a single property you can extract those properties from a waveform and then use it uh, to define another waveform or uh, to modify the characteristic of another waveform so those all things will be done you will learn them as per Uh, your expertise and as it comes in your way of learning 